It's been said that every quilt tells a story, and it's so true. But I also believe every quilter has a story to tell. I wanted to hear about the people behind these wonderful quilts and thought you'd enjoy hearing about their lives also. Welcome to A Quilter's Life. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas. It's such a great time of year to get together with family and to celebrate and to worship. All those things. I so hope you had a wonderful time. This week, I'm going to list the 20 favorite quilting tools from the first 18 months of a Quilter's Life podcast. I can't really elaborate on several of them because I haven't expanded my selection of tools too much. As I'm slowly gathering tools, I've been listening to these suggestions and there's several that I'm hoping to get. I'm going to start with 20. With this tool, one guest really didn't have a tool, so I was asking her if she had heard of this tool before, and the very next guest listed it as their favorite, so that hit me kind of funny. It's called Quick Clip, and it's a tool that helps you open and close the safety pins when you're sandwiching your quilt. I bought this when I went to take that first quilting class, and I use it with every quilt. Number 19, applique press sheet. I'm not very experienced in applique, so I have not had the opportunity to use the press sheet. Number 18, when I interviewed Swan Amnity, she made quilting gloves, and of course that was her favorite tool. They're really a neat product. I know I saw her use them in one of her tutorials. 17. Quilter Select Rulers. Number 16. A two and a half by 12 and a half ruler with a rotating mat. She also liked a one by six ruler. So she mentioned small rulers and using her rotating cutting mat. Now I checked out a rotating cutting mat and it seemed like it was hard to move. So I chose not to pick one up, but when I was visiting Stitch in Heaven and getting a tour through the back rooms, they had Martelli rotating cutting mats, and I reached over and turned it a little bit just to see how smooth it worked, and it moved very easily, and I can only assume that if Stitch in Heaven is using it in their back rooms, it must be a great tool. Number 15, Five and Dime Ruler by Kansas Troubles. I had to look this one up again, but it looked like a really neat ruler to be able to work on your half square triangles. I'm sure there's other uses for it, but that's what it looked like to me. Number 14, Martelli Cutter. Now, I did buy one of those when I was visiting the Stitch in Heaven quilt shop. And it fits my hand much better and does seem easier to use, but I'm still getting used to it. Number 12 is the slotted ruler. I am hoping to get one of these fairly soon. Of course, I've been looking at them for a year now. Number 11, Studio 180 rulers. I've heard a lot of neat things about those. Number 10, Thread nippers or snips. These are quite handy to use at your sewing machine. Number nine, clover fork pin for getting perfectly aligned seams. I haven't used them, but they really do look neat to be able to match up those seams and keep it all held together right. Number eight, AccuQuilt Go. Several people have mentioned using their AccuQuilt, and they do seem great for precise cutting. Number seven, binding clips. I've seen some really nice binding clips out there, and I don't have those ones. I have ones that kind of look like a hair barrette, but they do the job. But I'm wondering if the newer binding clips would hold the fabric better. 
Number six is a very interesting answer. She said, my hands and my imagination. When she first said it, I had to say, what? Because <laughs> I was trying to picture something you could grab onto, but no, this is your own hands and your imagination. But yes, if we didn't have that, how else will we be able to be so creative? Number five is an all or that purple thing. It has come in so handy to keep your fingers away from the needle. Number four, quarter inch foot. I am constantly using mine. I know that helps me keep closer. I don't think I'm too accurate yet. I keep working at it, but I do love my quarter inch foot. Number three, sewing machine and accessories. I know there's still some people that sew everything by hand, but I think just about all of us use a sewing machine now, and I don't think we would want to do what we do without that machine. Number two, I was surprised at how many people actually called this their favorite tool, the seam ripper. But yet it's a great tool to help us take those things apart that we put together by accident. Number one, the rotary cutter and mat. Probably more of us anymore take those tools for granted. But if we step back and think about not having those tools, how much harder our job would be. So the rotary cutter and mat are wonderful. I hope you enjoyed this list of tools that people have enjoyed. And I hope it helps you in your quilting this coming year in 2023. I still can hardly believe we're through 2022, but here we are. And I want to wish you a happy new year and a wonderful 2023. Again, I want to say thank you to Carolina Moore and Belle Bruner. Several days this past week, I was busy scheduling interviews so that I will be able to continue to bring you stories of the wonderful people behind the beautiful quilts. All of this because Carolina and Bill shared posts on Facebook. Not only great quilters in the USA, but also several in other countries. So I'm so excited to get to share these stories with you. This is going to be a great beginning of 2023. Again, Happy New Year! You can find more stories on aquilterslife.com or subscribe on your favorite podcast player so each episode will be downloaded automatically. Also, I want to hear about you and your wonderful quilts. Please contact me, Paula Chamberlain, through the website to set up an interview. And as always, thanks for listening.